All right, it's time for part three of our Annie News Old Tensura React. This one is called How Strong is Rimuru Tempest at the end of, I think, season one. I think this is Great Sage and Predator. There's like a part two that we'll also watch. Let's see what Annie News has to say. Rimuru could very well be the strongest isekai protagonist I've ever come across. Kazuma him! <laughs> Kazuma's there! Yo, how the fuck did Kazuma sneak himself into this fucking isekai roster? Well... Uh, so far, we know of Rimuru in the middle. We know of Hajime Arifurata. We know, I think this is Tate no Yusha-sama, right? We got Overlord Dude, ReZero Dude, Tanya Dude, which is basically Tanya. And I think this is how not to summon a Demon Lord, which people have told me is just basically borderline hentai. But, um, this is really our fucking roster? I think Cosma fucking low diffs everyone here, bro. Cross. Maybe not the way he is right now in the anime, but his potential for growth is unlike any other character I've ever seen before. Rimuru, yes. What I mean is that everything that makes Rimuru what he is is designed to make him become stronger. Uh, I think last video, this, that was like two weeks ago, but one of the most craziest things that I didn't know about Rimuru's potential is not just his ridiculous powers, but like his makeup, his substance, because he came with the soul of a human, and again, souls of humans are better suited for skills, I think, while having the body of a monster to harness the magicules. Because humans are bad with magicules, but have a good soul for skills, which is kind of counterintuitive. But Rimuru basically has the best of both worlds, which I didn't understand from just watching the anime. Every tool at his disposal paves the way towards this seemingly limitless path of evolution. So, even if he might not be the strongest right now, his unique skills of Great Sage and Predator turned Gluttony will certainly be working to change that. And Bill's They're the later. two central components of his build that allow him to become as strong as he does. So, let's take a look at how exactly they work as we try to answer the question in the title. But first, sponsor of today's. But first, they so fucking good with Bro, this is like anime openings now that I call out in the fucking intro section of a fucking anime episode. I've seen so many anime videos that I just understand his fucking, you know, <laughs> his format. All right, guys, go and use your discount code and use for your first 10 pull off of Raid Shadow Legends and get back to the main content. In order to understand exactly how strong Rimuru is, we first need to have a basic understanding of what skills are in general. Hotkeys, macros, skills are either tether to the soul or some kind of astral body outside of it and better than magic memorized magic skills i don't fucking know souls are better for it reason being that a large majority of rimuru's power comes directly from the skills he's acquired throughout the anime whoa I, 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 shit. this is can i read this because like this is a list of skills but i fear that reading this might spoil some content beyond season three so Maybe I shouldn't read it. I really want to read this chart. But like, probably not a good idea, so I'll just skip it. They're his innate abilities that have been carved into the very core of his being. But unlike how other shows will classify these skills by their type or level of power, Tensida does it by order of evolution. And okay. that's where things start to get a little bit complicated. So, without getting- I can read? It's anime only? You guys are fucking trolling. I swear to God, if I read this shit and it's actually bad, uh, I, 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 you better not do this. You better not fucking do this. You better not do this. I do love reading charts and stuff like this, though. All right. What does he got? What does he got? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. At a large majority Show me. of Rimuru's power comes directly from the skin. Okay. He is a demon slime, right? Race, demon slime. Protection. Crest of the storm. What the fuck is protection? Crest of the storm? This is new. This is probably more details that the anime kind of glossed over. Crest of the storm. Title. Leader of the monsters and true demon lords. So this is after obviously the true demon lord evolution, getting you know Billy Bob and Raphael and stuff like that. Magic, elemental magic, physical magic, spirit magic, high level, high level demon and spirit summoning. From the skills, infinite region, universal detect. We know all this, right? Lord's ambition, Lord's ambition. Uh, glut. Uh, it, it, does this have to do with Geld? You know the demon lord. No, that's be. I don't know. Lord's ambition sounds really cool though. Raphael, we know that, right? Bills above. And yes, these ultimate skills are basically a combination of many different skills, you know, woven together. I think that's what Annie said last time. Bills above, we have that. Uriel, Lord of Vows, Veldora. So, Uriel is a name of an angel, right? Raphael is an angel. Uriel is also an angel. Bills above, devil. 
really wonder why, you know, these ultimate skills are named after angels and devils. I always, you know, was like, you know, well, ever since the season 3 anime, just this... Well, season 3 didn't say it. Season 2 during Diablo versus, you know, Rosin fight, when they gave us the rock, paper, scissors format of, like, spirit, demon, angels, what beats what. Angels are already leaked there, and nobody fucking knew. Well, at least I didn't, but it's like, what is going on, bro? What is going on with the fucking angels and devil naming schemes? And then yeah. there's Eldera. There's there Eldera his innate that. abilities yeah. that have been carved into the very core of his being. But unlike how other shows will classify these skills by their type or level of power, Tensida does it by order of evolution. And that's where things start to get a little bit complicated. Okay. So, without getting too much into it, the order of evolution goes from common to extra to unique, unique to ultimate. ultimate yep. Each tier progressively building upon See the you. one before it. Common, as you'd expect, refers to the most basic level, whereas extra refers to skills that are significantly more powerful and efficient than that. Unique skill. These two tiers then serve as the foundation to build towards the even more powerful unique and ultimate skills, both of which once possessed by a single person can no longer be possessed by anyone else so long as that person is still alive. That's the craziest thing, right? It's like, oh, yeah, I mean, obviously that's what unique is. Only one person has it. There's no duplicates, but like, damn, like no other person in the world can have a skill like that. But I think Usurper is interesting because there are some skills where there are some similar patterns. Like what is Usurp at the end of the day? You're usurping someone's skills. You can either take them or you can just kind of copy or and have it too, right? And we kind of have something similar. I think ours is better, right? Um, Gluttony and eventually Beelzebub. It, it, it does the same thing in the sense that of taking or learning that person's skill. But yeah, just because it's unique, Obviously, it means that one person can only have that one single unique skill, but there may be some overlap and similarities in other skills, yeah? Now, the key difference between an ultimate and unique skill mainly pertains to their level of power. Because ultimate skills are the final evolutionary form, it makes sense for it to be an absolute force There's of There's really nothing beyond ultimate, huh? by anything beneath it. That said, this isn't really the type of skill that we're going to be looking at right now. Instead, what we'll be focusing on is Rimuru's power before his evolution. So that means every ability he acquired. Oh, here we go. And then this is before. So part two will most likely be after the evolution. And part one is obviously before. So basically just like season one content until true Demon Lord Awakening. So race, just slime. Protection still has the same crest of the storm. Same stuff. Unique, great stage, deviant, glutton, extra skill. Yeah, this is all stuff that we already know. This is pretty much all we know. Mimicry though. Fire giant. Never seen him turn into a fire giant. Or a goblin. Goblin Rimuru. No, I haven't seen him turn into that kind of stuff. Again, maybe the light novel did, but it's like, Prior you know, to becoming the anime, the Lord at the end of the first half of season two. One of the first things to note is that just by being a slime already gives Rimuru a natural advantage. The fact that he's a monster whose existence survives on magicules and nothing else. Exactly, right? Monsters, great source of magicules. Thank you, Thor, for the gift of sub. But humans, bad with magicules. But we have monster body, magicule, and the soul of a human. Crazy. Makes it so that he never needs to eat, sleep, or even breathe. Because every single one of his cells are identical, they can each work towards serving whatever function the body needs. Hmm. It's for this reason that his body is just naturally efficient at managing energy. That, however, isn't all it comes with, though. Slimes in this world also possess their own set of intrinsic skills. A separate type of skill apart from the like ones what? I mentioned earlier that only apply to a specific race of physical being or spiritual life form. So, for a slime like Rimuru, the intrinsic skills he starts off with are Absorb, Dissolve, and Self-Regeneration. That's pretty crazy. Absorb, Dissolve, and Self-Regen. What is it? You're basically swallowing some shit, you can fucking melt it down, and you can also heal yourself. Slimes are usually not that scary monsters, right? They're like, ter like, like tutorial territory level monsters. But if you really think about what it makes up a slime, it's kind of fucking crazy. Absorb and Dissolve is pretty much the foundation of Predator. It's the ability to take in any form of matter, skill, or magic, then break it down into its most basic elements. That's busted. Self-regeneration, on the other hand, is more like a very basic form of healing. It restores the user's body if it happens to have taken damage, lost limbs included. That said, all three of these have served as the evolutionary basis for more powerful skills. The first of which we're going to talk about is Predator. This OP. is one of the unique skills that Rimuru acquired upon his reincarnation. A skill type that we now know- And why did he get it? Because he was saying, next time, I'm not going to be a virgin. I'm going to be aggressive with girls. Didn't happen. Was he more aggressive with girls? Well, I didn't really know, you know, Rimuru as a human before. 
but he's been pretty pacifist towards girls. He's never been super pervy. I don't think he's ever really made a move, but then he did become like a gender fluid slime. He probably doesn't have those desires anymore, right? No comprises itself of numerous different subskills. So when a unique skill like Predator is used, the first thing that happens is predation. It's the process of absorbing whatever target he wants into his body. Big suck. This is then followed by a stage of research Dissolve. and analysis. Never mind analysis. The target is comprehensively studied in a way that allows Rimuru to recreate suck. it should he choose to. Study? If the absorbed target is a form of skill or magic, then a successful analysis of its casting method would grant Rimuru the ability to learn how to cast it himself. If it's a craftable item or an animate object though, then the reproducibility of it depends on whether the required materials are available or not. These are materials that are typically gained when targets are broken down and stored within Rimuru's stomach. That's all the shit that we farm so hard in the tutorial kit. All those mats, bro. All those herbs. That's what even like started the mass production of the ridiculous high-grade potions, dude. That cave, bro. That Veldora cave, actually OP. It's yet another one of the sub effects all that these mats, bro. from Predator. The ability to store any material or item produced via analysis directly within Rimuru's stomach for an indefinite period of time. Now, it may seem like Rimuru can store as much as he wants, but Thank you, there Thor, actually does for exist gift some sub. form of upper limit to his capacity. For a bit more context on exactly how much, well, Veldora had taken up about 15% alone. Then, the mass amount of water he ingested in the cave- Wait, what was the 15%? Just like volume? Limit to his capacity. Upper limit, it's just basically volume, some kind of like, um, weight limit, some kind of like, quantifiable percentage that caps the storage, I guess, yeah? For a bit more context on exactly how much, well, Veldora had taken up about 15% alone. Okay. Then, the mass amount of water he ingested in the cave filled up about 10% more. An additional 2% was from the medicinal herbs and recovery potions, and 3% was from the ores and minerals he ate. And 100% to remember the name. That's an old fucking meme. Thank you, Thor, for another gifted sub! So, with only 30% being occupied by a godlike dragon and other various resources, there's definitely quite a bit of room for more. But anyway, it's after a successful analysis has been completed that the form and skills of the analyzed target can be reproduced at any time via mimicry. And if there ever does come a point where something harmful or unnecessary for analysis is absorbed, then that specific aspect of the target is neutralized, broken down, and stored as magical energy. Okay. It's the last of the five core components. P. Passums. Passums. So far, we have predation, which is just suck. Analysis, which is studying. Stomach, which is storage. Mimicry is what we're talking about right now. Passum is. No, no. This is passami. Yeah, this is passami. This is not passimsis. This is passami. It's that to make up the unique skill predator. Now, as I'm sure you could tell, Predator's ability to copy and replicate literally anything paves a unique path of evolution in which infinitely more skills can be acquired. Infinitely. These can then be combined with other skills and those can then serve as the foundation for more unique and ultimate skills in the future. It's the first step towards what's pretty much an unfathomable scale of power. So already like the fundamentals, like the framework laid out. Bro was just geared to get ultimate skills because of predation, because he's able to do the pass me, it's just OP. And his physical makeup, slime monster body, human soul, and predator. And then we also have, you know, OP, chat GPT, which is Great Sage, which will then evolve into chat GPT 4, Raphael later. That said, it's not the only strong asset that was given to Rimuru right from the get-go. What initially started out as the- I, I always see this guy. I always see this guy and I'm like, why the fuck is bro so jacked for no reason? Like, what anime is this? Makes me really interested. What initially started out as the extra skill Sage was immediately evolved into the unique, unique. skill Great Sage. All it took was a total of 90 days for it to finish fusing itself to Rimuru's soul. As 90 days to fuse into Rimuru's soul? Holy shit, I didn't realize it'd take that long. Also, it has to fuse into the soul? Because it's a skill. But it was a great skill before. But because it's like a unique skill, it's like a new skill, you're taking the shit from before and just like etching it into the soul again. And skills are only not bound to the soul, but also something else as well. I think we talked about that. That was kind of something that Andy News apparently made a mistake on last video. I forget, the comments kind of explained it. The way that he said it made it seem like the soul can only be born within the soul, which is like the ego of a human or like a being, but it's like it can actually be etched into some other parts of it. As soon as that time was up, 
that's when it emerged in his head as the voice of the world. Now, usually this voice would only ever be heard when the world was changing or a skill was earned or upgraded. Vo voice of the world is only heard when the world is changing, skill was earned or upgraded. The, it wouldn't be like a public announcement. It would just be to us, right? I think that everyone heard the voice of the world when uh, Rimuru was undergoing the transformation and the uh, true demon lord awakening. It was like basically global announcement and everyone could hear it. But sometimes I guess it's only heard to individuals. The voice of the world is so interesting to me, man. Thank you for the gift to sub. I think the voice of the world is so interesting. It's almost like a GM, like an MMO and you have global chat. It's like a banner. You ever play games and you can have like a, a megaphone, like a shout out? You can have like people all hear that shit. It's like that. It just like announces. Unique skill, sorry, ultimate skill earned. The Rimuru has evolved into true demon lord. This person has gained this fucking gear. But with the help of Great Sage, this voice could now be used as his own personal query machine. Since it is a soulless ability devoid of any sentience whatsoever though. Until Raphael. Then it gets so fucking sassy, bro. Dude, Raphael, it becomes so sassy. Raphael got the fucking jokes. Great Sage. Did Great Sage really not have any sense of humor? I would have to go back. Season 1. Wasn't Great Sage a little, little funny here in 10? Obviously, it wasn't just being like kind of tsundere and just going like, hmm. But I swear to God, Great Sage was showing a little potential of just like fucking around with us before. It would never actually no, talk not to Rimuru unless he was to ask it a question first. Huh. That was the single drawback of an otherwise very OP ability. Now, the reason I say that is because one of the core five sub-effects associated with Great Sage is known as All of Creation. It's the ability to comprehend pretty much everything. Oh, this is why Great Sage has knowledge of fucking everything. Why she's the fucking AI fucking encyclopedia for everything. All of Creation. So long as what he's- Does that mean- but what is Great Sage? Great Sage is a unique skill, but the skill has a skill? All of creation. Ability to comprehend pretty much everything. D d d does a skill have a skill so that the skill could be used with the aid of another Am I making sense? I don't know. Great Sage knows everything because of all of creation. That's it though. Much everything. So long as what he's looking at is visible or perceivable, then all of creation will make it so that Great Sage can relay back detailed information on it. That doesn't mean he knows about literally everything everywhere, though. He. Yet. Raphael. Great Sage have a fucking gender? Probably doesn't. Probably just any is just kind of speaking in this perspective of a he. The information available to him is dependent on whether he recognizes and understands the concept he's looking at. Only after he does can he receive. Maybe it is a guy. I don't know. Maybe Great Sage is a dude. No, we don't. Great Sage is a fucking. Great Sage is a girl. Great Sage has the voice of a girl. Then again, so does the voice of the world. It's a shared. I don't know. He keeps saying him though. And I'm like, is this important or not? Probably not. I'm probably focusing on something that doesn't really need to be said. Maybe Great Sage is a fanboy. I don't know. Leave a full analysis on it. Now, while this does sound very limiting. There was a very clever workaround that Rimuru decided to implement in order to avoid it. But it involves a combination of Predator and one of the other sub-effects that comprises Great Sage as a whole. What? So, before we can talk about what that is, let's first take a look at what else this powerful skill provides. The first effect is what's known as Thought Acceleration. Thought Acceleration. The power to just... The, fr the frequency... The thoughts in your life just increases, bro. You get more bitches with this skill. It's the ability to multiply Rimuru's perception speed by a factor of a thousand. Oh, this is a great scene, bro. This is a fucking great scene. That fucking, you know, the, the, the Yusha, the other fucking summons, bro. He had like the, them kind of like, uh, being able to perceive fast and all these fucking cheat skills. And Hakuda was like, nah, I'm gonna make you fucking live your fucking pain through like a century or something. Anyways, thought acceleration. By a factor of a thousand. Then analytical appraisal. Didn't thought up, uh, didn't that also happen with Clayman at the end of season two, right? Then there was two instances when we made someone like like face like eternal hell. It was like Hakuro versus that guy, and then Clayman after the transformation. I swear to God that also happened. Allows for an in-depth assessment of any target that Rimuru is looking at. The next effect is why analytical appraisal basically just again just 
you look at it, you just fucking know. Any target that Rimuru is looking at. The next effect is one that negates the necessity of a casting period. Anything that requires an incantation list. like how magic does is completely bypassed via the sub effect cast cancel. Cast cancel, yo! We are fucking animation canceling right now, bro. Fucking sweaty gamers just dash canceling, L canceling. Fucking, I, I don't know, there's a lot of different games where there's different mechanics to basically cancel out of uh, uh, an animation to save you frames so you can do something else, right? Then finally, we have what's known as parallel processing. This Multiple is the minds. ability Multiple to separate minds. his analyses from his regular thought processes. So, if Remuru is assessing a target like, let's say, Milam, then the process behind it will remain detached from his regular thoughts. The analysis will be handled in its own individual area. Basically, remember, oh man, remember our schizo friends from uh, So I'm a Spider, So What? We had a lot of parallel minds going on there, man. Kind of like how Kumoko uses different yeah. <laughs> He just knows. And he just knows, man. The real sees real, man. Things for different things. That said, any analysis separated from the main thought process will still be affected by the perception boost of thought acceleration. Okay. So, there's pretty much zero downside in setting aside all analyses as a parallel operation. That's why after Rimuru had figured this out, he decided to link this specific effect with the analysis effect of Predator. It made for a combination of skills that exponentially improved his analytical capabilities. Basically just multiple minds. Instead of having fucking one computer, you have like five fucking different computers searching up the same shit, the different shit, man. For example, an analysis of something like these herbs would have taken at least 50 minutes with Predator alone. But by combining Predator's multiple analysis threads. with Great Sage's multiple threads. processing, that 50 minute load time becomes reduced to a single second. It's literally multi-threaded fucking computers, bro. Just having different threads to allocate the overall resource and spread it. Having more resources to allocate the burden into, you know, different fucking, you know, parallel mind. So, with such a vast increase in performance, I'm sure you can start to piece together how this works in tandem with all cool. of creation to provide instantaneous knowledge. Because Predator's analysis and Great Sage's parallel processing allows him to immediately understand whatever he's absorbed, all of creation can then relay any and all information associated with it. It's an extremely powerful combination that has made his evolutionary path even easier to traverse than before. That's why everything just seems to come so naturally to him. It does. Some people get really upset about Tensura because they feel like Rimuru doesn't really do anything and he just kind of just wins. And I really thought about this the other day. Someone had a very hot, hot take. I was watching this streamer and he's talking, he's a big anime fan. And he's talking about, he's a big Overlord fan. And he was talking about the skeleton dude was so sick. Thank you for the 10 gifted sub store. I appreciate it, my man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's so very generous. But like, does Rimuru deserve all this shit? That's a totally different topic. I'm getting kind of off topic, right? Because this, what Andy is saying is kind of explaining the idea of why Rimuru is just so fucking cracked and everything just seems dizzy. But beyond that, did he earn this shit? That's an answer that I don't really have. You know? I, I don't know if Rimuru actually earned anything. Did I ever see him struggle and like face death multiple times like Songjin Mu and come from nothing to almost like, you know, get to the top? I don't think so. Does it need to happen? No. I could understand why people do get upset at why Rimuru is just kind of breathing through everything and doesn't seem like, you know, everyone just glazing him up and stuff like that. But I don't know. There's still a lot of stuff behind the scenes that, you know, kind of suggest as to why he's having such a smooth ride. But yes, thank you, Thor, for all the gift of subs. I do appreciate it, my man. So, with Great Sage acting as the source for finding answers, and Predator's analysis being the skill that fills that source with knowledge, Rimuru is able to comprehend just about anything. Cool. Not only that, but skills are also often combined and evolved through this process as well. Like, the intrinsic skills Dissolve, Absorb, and Self-Regeneration were the combined skills. with the mimicry skill of Predator to create Ultra Speed Regeneration, okay. an extra skill that significantly enhanced the effects of Self-Regeneration. It's actually a form of evolution that we've seen numerous times in the anime. Rimuru would absorb a life form or spirit that possesses unique skills of their own, then Great Sage would add them to his arsenal and make them better. If any of the absorbed skills were similar in nature to the ones he already possessed, combine. then Great Sage would simply combine the two together. Mm. 
That's why when Rimuru had defeated the Orc Disaster Gelt, his unique skill of Ravenous was taken and combined into Predator, resulting in the evolution of Predator into Gluttony. Is that kind of the idea of the ultimate skills, why some skills are kind of like sacrificed for the sake of the ultimate skills? I remember Merciless being part of the food to make up Bilzebub. Obviously, Great Sage and Raphael, you know, that's like an order of things. But interesting. Yeah, I, I was kind of like upset that like, uh, I was kind of upset that, what's it called? That some people... Fuck, I'm getting- I can't even- I'm trying to think about this show and you guys keep fucking gifting subs! I, I lost my train of thought! Aside from doubling the capacity of his stomach, what this did was add the subskills of Ravenous into the already existing subskills of Predator. Okay. So, in addition to predation, stomach, mimicry, and isolation, Gluttony now also possessed the subskills Corrosion, Receive, and Provide. Okay. Corrosion worked towards decomposing a target in tandem with predation. If that target was a monster, then a partial decomposition of it would give Rimuru the chance to acquire one of its skills. Receive is the ability for Rimuru to claim any of his subordinate skills as his own. That is OP. And we can also give, right? I think other people can also... No. Is it the other way around? Or is it only one way around? I think that... Because, like... He can give other people his skills. But he can definitely use all the skills that our minions can use, right? Then yes, provide is the is. ability to do the opposite. Exactly, I should just fucking play the video. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Receive, provide, we can just basically do everything. We're just sharing fucking everything. One of the earliest examples of that was Shadow. Something like Shadow Traverse, you know? In the earlier episodes when, like, Gulptel was trying to get into, like, the Shadow and he was kind of left back at, you know, Gazelle's fucking kingdom and shit like that. It allows Rimuru to give skills to others so long as they're actually capable of using it. What this means is that both Rimuru and his underlings will get stronger in proportion to the other's growth. Crazy. So even if he can't share any of his knowledge or spells with them, what he can do is properly allocate skills in a way that will maximize everyone's potential. Because Rimuru directly benefits from the growth of his subordinates now, making them stronger is pretty much the same thing as making himself stronger. It's yet another aspect in an already long list that serves to both increase and accelerate Rimuru's growth potential. But just because he can possess what seems like an infinite number of skills, doesn't mean that he'll instantly be proficient at all of them. Knowing which skill is- Has he struggled with using a new skill in the anime? I don't think there's ever been a moment where Rimuru kind of just like struggled. It's almost like... I don't know, he-, he You know like in Data Live? This is a totally separate example. Like in Data Live, when a girl becomes a spirit through like, you know, giving the fucking Seraphim core or some shit, they like- have all these different fucking memories flooded and they just know what to call. Like Origami, Metatron, how the fuck do you know what a Metatron is? Do you know all these different skills? You know, but here, he never seemed to ever struggle. Because we have Grey Sage? I don't know. Number of skills doesn't mean that he'll instantly be proficient at all of them. He seems Knowing to be. Knowing which skill is best for each and every situation isn't something that Rimuru can do alone. I mean, it looks That's like he it. sometimes needs to give control over to the Sage. Autopilot mode. Yo, we haven't used autopilot mode in a while. I think we use autopilot mode against the fire Ifrit, right? Ifrit, I think there was a moment there when we just like put on autopilot mode for a second. I forgot to think. By using great safe. Did we use autopilot mode against Hinata too? That was different. It is automatic battle mode. Every ability in Rimuru's arsenal will be used at maximum efficiency. It's a completely optimized approach to battle that demonstrates absolute mastery over every single one of his skills. Why don't we just fucking Orc Lord? Gotcha. Why don't... So like, Autopilot is like literally his strongest mode. Mastery over every single of his skills. And Raphael or, you know, Grey Sage before, they would know what the optimal move is. Okay, he only used it against Orc Lord, my bad. But, uh, shit, like, maybe we should always just use Autopilot mode. Man, if when Kirito has, you know, the gold yellow eyes, does that mean that he's in autopilot mode too? So, if possessing such a wide range of abilities wasn't already good enough, then try having a conceptual intelligence immediately optimize and implement them with zero effort whatsoever. That's why he's That's OP. That's the crux of Rimuru's power. Everything he is and everything he can become all stems from these two unique skills that he received at birth. Predator They're the most and Great crucial Sage. elements behind his power. Everything else is more so a specific skill or ability that supplements it. 
And that's what we'll be talking about when I get to part two. Next video. If that's a video that you'll like to see soon, then be sure to leave a like or a comment so that I know to get started on it. Y'all know what to do. Please go give Mr. Andy News a sub. Go like his videos. He always gives us such great breakdowns of what's going on. But basically, my understanding of why... Well, this is more like how strong is Rimuru Tempest. But I feel like this is more like why Rimuru is so strong. First things first. The physical makeup, you know, body of a monster. Very great magicules, but also soul of a human. More better for skills. On top of that, we have Predator and... Uh, great Sage that kind of acts as the fundamental, allowing us to basically have so many ways to absorb skills, learn new skills, evolve skills, and have an infinite potential that scales up and up while having this AI fucking mind that can optimize everything. We learn something so fucking quick. It's just OP. And the more I think about it, it doesn't make sense why Rimuru just seems to just glaze over everything so simply. But I do understand why a lot of other peoples that doesn't seem that doesn't really understand slime, would just like say, damn, this character's a fucking cheat. Why can't he do this? Well, this is kind of the reason, but the anime probably doesn't really go into depth to do it, but the light novel does. And the watch out Mr. Annie News is for. All right, that's it for today's video. We will be watching even more Annie News content. Part two of this series is next.